The Martian Conquerors. The Martian Conquest of the Indian Subcontinent was the phrase, the first great <clears throat> iconoclastic invasion into South Asia. Oh. Iconoclastic means uh, the social belief in the importance of the destruction of icons and other images or monuments. People who engage in or support iconoclasm are called iconoclasts. So they came into India to destroy icons. By the end of the 12th century, Buddhism had mostly disappeared. But why just Buddhism? Why didn't Hinduism disappear too? So, the, well, they, the, by the 12th century, they came in and destroyed icons such as the stupas. They destroyed the monasteries that are the medieval northwest in Western India, which is now Pakistan and North India. Hmm. Okay, in the Northwestern parts of medieval India, the Himalayan regions, as well as Regions bordering Central Asia, Buddhism once facilitated trade relations. That says, according to Lars Ogilvy, Ogilvy, he says that Buddhism once facilitated trade relations. Trade relations. Uh, in the uh, in the Himalayan regions, in as well as in the regions bordering Central Asia, that would be what Afghanistan, Tibet. Going north from the Himalayan regions, uh, northwestern parts of medieval India. What would that be? Afghanistan, Ladakh, Pakistan, those areas. So there was a lot of trade relations going on with Buddhism between non-Buddhists and Buddhists. But, with the Islamic invasion and expansion and Central Asians adopting Islam, the trade route derived, the trade route derived financial support sources and the economic foundations of Buddhists Monastery declined, on which the survival and growth was of Buddhism was based. The arrival of Islam removed the royal patronage to the monastic tradition of Buddhism in the replacement of Buddhists in long distance trade by the Muslims eroded the related sources of patronage. 
The large Soglin suspects that that the Buddhist monasteries were involved in some kind of trade, but then they were replaced by Islamic means of trade. Somehow the with the Muslim invaders and conquerors, uh, they they became the captains of trade somehow. In the Gangetic plains, Gangetic, as in Gan the Ganges River, and in Orissa and in northeast and su the southern regions of India, Buddhism did survive through the early centuries of the second millennia. Up to, up to when? Well, it survived in Sri Lanka, in Ceylon. But that's, that's an, an island, island separate, separate from India. India. So, so the Islamic invasion plundered wealth and destroyed Buddhist images, and the consequent takeover of land holdings of Buddhist monasteries removed one source of necessary support for the Buddhists. While the economic upheaval and new taxes on laity sapped the laity support of Buddhist monks. Monasteries and institutions such as Nalanda were abandoned by Buddhist monks around 1200. Is that the 11th? No, that be the 13th century. Uh, the the Buddhist monks from Nalanda fled to escape invading Muslim army, after which the site of Nalanda University, the, the site decayed over the Islamic rule in India that followed. The last empire to support Buddhism, the Pala dynasty, fell in the 12th century. And Muhammad bin Bakhtiyar Kauji, a general of the early Delhi Sultanate, destroyed monasteries and monuments and spread Islam in Bengal. According to Randall Collins, Buddhism was already declining in India before the 12th century, but with the pillage of Muslim invaders, the pillage by Muslim invaders, it nearly became extinct in the 1200s and in the 13th centuries states Craig in the 13th century states Craig Lockhart Lockhart in the 13th century but it is not in India escaped to Tibet to escape 
Islamic persecution. While the monks in Western India states Peter Harvey escaped persecution by moving to South Indian Hindu kingdoms that were able to resist the Muslim power. Hmm. Wow. So, also many Indian Buddhists did flee to the south. It is known that Buddhists continued to exist in India even in after the 14th century. From texts such as the Chaitanya Charitamrita, this text outlined an episode of the life of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, a Vaishnava saint who was said to have entered into a debate with Buddhists in Tamil Nadu. The Tibetan Taranata <coughs> He was a Lama of the Jonang school of Tibetan Buddhism. He is widely considered its most remarkable and scholar and exponent of the Jonang school. That was from 1575 to 1634. That was after Jason Kappa, right? Well, anyway, he wrote a history of Indian Buddhism, and he mentions Buddhism as having, sur as having survived in some pockets of India during his time. He mentions the Buddhist Sangha as having survived in Kolkana, Kalinga, Mewad, Chitor, Abu, Saurashtra, Saurashtra. Vindhya Mountains, Ratnagiri, Karnataka, etc. A Jain author, Gunakirti, wrote a Marathi text, the Dharamramitra, where he gives the names of 16 Buddhist orders. Dr. John Jora Purka noted that among them, the names Satagare, Dongare, Navagare, Kavishvar, Dasani, and Shabujanik still survive in Maharashtra as family names. I guess those family names are Buddhist. Buddhism also survived in the modern era in the Himalayan region, such as Ladakh, which close ties to Tibet. A unique tradition survives in Nepal's Newar Buddhism. Abu Fazl, the courtier of Mughal Emperor states for a long time past scarce any traces of them the Buddhists has existed in Hindustan that was said by Abu Basil he said the 1500s he says 
said, Buddhism was very scarce in Hindustan. And when he visited Kashmir, he met with a few old men professing Buddhism. However, he saw none among the learned. It, uh, the, in other words, Buddhist priests were not present amidst learned divines that came to the Vedakana, the meeting house, by the Mughal Emperor Akbar, to gather spiritual leaders from different religions to conduct a discussion on the teachings. That was in 1575. The Mughal emperor gathered uh, religious leaders for uh, comparative religion workshop. There weren't any Buddhist uh, teachers or learned people among them by 1575. Buddhism was pretty much gone in Hindustan. Or maybe they were afraid to show up. <laughs> Okay. Ah. Some scholars suggest that a part of the decline of Buddhist monasteries was because it was detached from everyday life in India and did not participate in the ritual social aspects, such as the rites of passage, marriage, funeral, birth, etc. Like, like other religions. religions. Mm, that's an uh, interesting theory. Mm. But there is hope. There in, in India, India there is a revival of Buddhism, Buddhism in India going on right now. <clears throat> There's the, there's what, four different strains of Buddhist revival. One is the Mahabodhi Society, another one is the Dalit Buddhist movement, and another one is Tibetan Buddhism, and then there's the Vipassana. Vipassana movement. Let's see the okay, the Mahabodhi Society. So that came about from various influences, including uh, Western Oriental scholarship and spiritual movements like Theosophy. Theosophy, the Theosophists, the Theosophists were people like Madame Helena Blavatsky, Helena Roerich, and Henry Steele Olcott. Uh, so, and it started around the late 1800s. There was a one institution, the Mahabodhi Society in 1891, and the Bengal Buddhist Association in 1892, and the Young Men Buddhist Association in 1898. And there were some Sri Lankan activity. There was a Sri Lankan 
Buddhist leader by the name of Anagarika Dharmapala. He was a Sri Lankan or Sinhalese Buddhist revivalist and writer. He was the first global Buddhist missionary. He was one of the founding contributors of the nonviolent Sinhalese Buddhist nationalism and a leading figure in Sri Lankan independence movement. He founded the Mahabodhi Society in 1891. An important focus of the Mahabodhi Society's activities in India became the recovery, conservation, and restoration of important Buddhist sites such as Bodh Gaya. Bodh Gaya. That's a religious site. Wow. They really fixed it up. It was in ruin. It, now it looks pretty nice. There's a big statue of the Buddha. Now it's a religious site and place of pilgrimage. Hmm. It's famous as the place where the Buddha, Gautama Buddha, is said to have attained enlightenment under what became known as the Bodhi tree. Hmm. They have a temple there called the Mahabodhi Temple. It's a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Dharmapala in the society promoting the building of Buddhist viharas and temples in India, including the one at Sarnath. 